Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Gear Talk. It's Thursday. It's Gear Talk time. That's what, that's what we do. Every other Thursday, we do this. Have you not gotten the memo? We've done this literally for, like, I think over five years now. Maybe over five we've done this. Like, we, I've been here for a while doing this. So, what are we doing today? Well, you saw the title. You know what we're doing. I wanted to do another because the Carmine one I actually really enjoyed doing. Uh, we're going to do another tier list, this time on the Hive Busters. I figured all the discussion series I did, I should probably catch up and do them. And uh, the one that happened before Gabe's Convoy was the Hive Busters. So that's what's next on the list. We're doing the Hive Buster discussion series. So uh, for this one, just like previously, there are some characters we are not going to be using for this. Uh, one of those characters, there's only really one, is going to be Donald Matheson. Now the reason we're not using him, he's really not an official member. He's mainly just like an affiliate that someone that Hoffman got a hold of is like, hey, uh, we need some help with something. Um, he didn't really do anything. Hoffman was pulling some strings and it was through Matheson that it happened. So uh, I'm not going to use Matheson for anything. He's not really an official member or anything. He's just there. We're going to go off of the main six people that we have that are a part of the operation. And we're going to go from there. Just like before, the setup is just like we had for the last one with the car mines. I think this worked out pretty well. I liked it. So we're going to start at the bottom, work our way up just like before. And as you can see, I kind of like the sitting position. So I just like this camera angle for it because I think it works for the... It works well for a tier list. So uh, starting at the very bottom, at the low tier we have, I actually have for the very bottom, Hana Cole. Now I have Hana here because of the fact that it is expressly stated multiple times, even from her, that she is not a soldier. She did not enlist to be a soldier. She did not want to be a soldier. What she wanted to be was a scientist. And she's a damn good scientist. Don't get me wrong. She's very good. Uh, she's the daughter of Cole and um, Cole's wife. So Augustus Cole, Hannah Cole, who would have guessed. Uh, but yeah, she really, like she shows that she has some combat expertise. Like she is able to actually hold her own in a fight uh, if she has to. That's what it comes down to. If she has to. Uh, that's like the last ditch resort like you know you have ben carmine he's trained to be a soldier hana has no training like she knows how to fire a pistol and as we see with the end of hive busters throw on some armor for her and give her a gun she can do that like but that's like the limits that's the higher echelon we have so for hana i feel like the low tier is where it should be there's not a lot i can really go in like she's a scientist um she can pick up a gun if she very much has to last ditch resort that's 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 hana so I think the very bottom at low tier is probably the best place for Hana. Coming up on the higher end of the low tier, I feel this is a good place for him. I actually have Jassy Talk or Jossy Tack. Um, I believe the actual name is Jossy Tack. I've always thought it was ta um, Talk until I heard the actual pronunciation in game. It's Tack. So it is Jossy Tack is the actual name for him. So. Uh, Jossie is here because of the fact that he is a Pensang warrior, a very deadly people when it comes to like behind enemy lines, like zero silence assassination kind of missions kind of thing. Uh, very good at gorilla. They're very talented. He comes from that people. He is a direct descendant, I believe of by which is a friend of Hoffman's. He even calls him like uncle Hoff or like, um, uncle Hoffman. Like he calls him that. And <sighs> I have them low, like medium level. Everyone always asked me when I did this. They were kind of like, people asked me um, when I was doing chats and stuff with people. And the high, medium, and low. The medium level, the bare center of the medium, is an average trained gear soldier going into combat. Okay, that is what a me the bare medium is. I'm not basing this off all the characters off of their, like, where do they stack up to each other. It is an average soldier we are going with the rankings for. And when it comes to Jossie, I'm sorry, he's never been enlisted. He's never been trained. Like, now, Hoffman could have trained him, obviously. We've seen in the comics when he was a kid, yeah, his dad gave him some lessons. He got help from Bernie. I, I agree, that's something. But he's never been like, here is your training. Like, in the last video, we talked about Gary. Gary was low tier. Yeah, he was trained, but he was never like officially like, here is actual dedicated training. And it was by Oscar. So, I mean, like, there you go. So... I think it's right to be here. He does have a machete, so he has like shown, for his people at least, he has reached adulthood, manhood. He has shown he is a pe one of his people. But I feel like if you were to put him against an average soldier in a one-on-one -on -one fight, I feel that average soldier could probably subdue him. Like I feel that very much. Um, a great pilot, don't get me wrong, great pilot. But I feel in an actual fight, I feel like Jossie still comes up a bit short. So... 
Uh, I definitely believe he's better than Hana in many regards. Like, he is able to use weapons. He is able to, like, fly. He's able to do all this. He is... He can still be in a battle and be useful. While Hana... Um, you're mostly defending Hana in a fight. Jossie can at least pick up a gun and be like, I'm defending Hana. Like, that would be his role. So, I feel like low tier is probably a good place, but, like, above Hana. Because Hana is, again, not... She doesn't want to do it, period. Jossie will do it, again, if he has to, but if the situation calls for it. Hana will, last ditch resort, do it. Going into the medium, much like the Carmines, like, that, that's funny, like, there's six here, there were six in the Carmines. This is built, like, exactly like the Carmines, uh, except, obviously, there's reasons. I wouldn't just do it like that and say, okay, we're just copying and pasting. No. Um, at the medium rank, I do have Mac. I have uh, McAllister, Leslie Mac McAllister, my favorite of all the Hive Busters. I have him at medium. I think that's a good place. If you were to say what area of medium, I think... I would normally say he'd be the lower tier. But after the comics, what you see in the comics, I can't in a good conscience put Mac as a low tier medium. He w He's the only one in medium right now. But if I had to put it in, I'm not going to lie. I think, honestly, an upper medium is what he has. Like, if you had to put him and Anthony together, um, like if I put all the lists together, which I want to do someday, put everyone together, um, I think he's above Anthony. I really think he is because yeah he doesn't have like military training but he's been an outsider since birth so he's been dealing with that they have come in contact with the cog you know he's been dealing with the swarm he's in scorpio and he's good with scorpio you know if you were to take beginning of hive busters mac he would probably be the highest of the low tier but after the comics after the after the game and then the comics because the comics happen after yeah um i don't feel like he should be high because I feel like there's still a lot he can do and show. Because he's literally like, you learn at the end of the comics. He's literally like, it's just, they're all suicide missions for me. I'd, if I die, I die. Whatever. At least I get to be with Dylan. That's Mac. So, um, I think medium's the best place, but like really high tier. So, uh, Mac barely staying in medium for right now. Now we're jumping into the high tier. And like I've said before, the high tier, these are characters that are like above an average gear. Or at least have shown they're above or like other gears, other standard gears respect these characters like to no end. Um, so coming up at the bottom, I actually have Keegan. Now Keegan's at the bottom of the high tier for everyone, but there's a reason, okay? There's a reason. Now, yes, he is Onyx Guard. That is like, automatically impressive. Honestly, I would say anyone who is an Onyx Guard either graduate and scripted anything like that maybe except for rivera and low um i think should honestly be high tier because they're onyx guard an average onyx guard soldier has gone through the academy has had the upper echelon of training and is basically in like the black ops green berayish type of teams like that you would normally see in like the real world like i'm sorry but like the black ops are very powerful they become a joke recently but they are very very do not mess with characters and keegan is an onyx guard and he holds that very high now keegan is a high level character i believe but you need to understand why i have him here for high tier um he is onyx guard he has shown he's capable of what he can do he does have training he was trained in the cog he was um quartermaster over at halvo bay that's where he was and when the locust attacked the Onyx Guard were also attacked, and he was actually holed up with the Onyx Guard, and he would go back and forth throughout, like, the uh, the water systems, and he would go and bring supplies back and forth, and he fought with the Onyx Guard. Now, when he, he did all of that, the Onyx Guard he was with were like, hey, you know, like, you're doing pretty kick-ass, this is pretty great, we're still alive basically because of you, why don't you come with us, and we'll inscript you into the Onyx Guard, we'll make you one of us, because that's, there's only two ways to becoming an Onyx Guard, only two ways. You either go through the academy and graduate, or another Onyx Guard, or I'm guessing someone higher rank Onyx Guard, like, brings you into the Guard. That's how it happens, and that's how Keegan got in. He didn't go through the training academy. He was brought in. Um, so that's why, like, I have him kind of lower, because he doesn't have the Onyx Guard training you get at the academy. He was brought in during the Locust. I'm guessing they were pretty limited for teaching at that point. But Keegan survived. He fought on Azura... Uh, that's another thing. He was on Azura. He wasn't fighting on the mainland, so he was held back a bit. Yeah, I, I think he's high tier. I really do think he is. I couldn't bring myself to say medium or like mid-tier. I couldn't bring myself to do it because he is a very trained character. When you first meet him in Hive Busters and Mac and Lanya are all brought in, you're like, yeah, this guy very obviously is on an upper, another level than Mac. Mac is the civvy that's brought in. Like, 
yeah, I think Keegan deserves to be in high tier where he sits. The next one I have up here that comes up is going to be Lonnie. I think out of the trio, I think out of the three members of Team Scorpio, I think Lonnie is the one that can really put boots to asses the most. I think Lonnie is the one that can kick some ass and take some names, no question. Uh, Lonnie, when she was 18, joined the Brash Brigade. She was like, she was, she was handling the locusts that were left over still alive. She was the one killing them. So that's what she did. Like, she was still fighting locusts. Like, Keegan, yeah, he fought locusts. That was a while ago, and he was like retired on Xguard at that point. You know, Mac, he never dealt with the locust. You know, uh, Jossie dealt with them when he was just a child. He has not dealt with them in his his preteen, teen, adult age ever. Hana never dealt with them. Lonnie's one of the only characters that came face to face and killed. She basically was the one with the Brash Brigade that eliminated what was left of Locust. That was her. She did that. Um, she did get put in prison, of course, and she was there until they got her out for Team Scorpio. But I'm sorry. Like, also she's Ty, she's Ty's like cousin. That's another thing right there. Um, Lonnie Kaliso. <sighs> she she could kick someone's ass. I think it's even brought up in the DLC. She holds the highest rank out of all three of them. Because Keegan has a rank, but Lonnie's is higher. Like, Lonnie is by rank higher than them. But Keegan goes by Onyx Guard ranking, so it's different. It doesn't work that way. But I'm sorry. Lonnie, Lonnie can kick their asses. I'm sorry. Lonnie... At any point, if she wasn't, like, kind and willing to listen to Mac, could have kicked his teeth in at any point, period. Um, Lonnie versus Keegan in a one-on-one, -on -one, I feel like Keegan would have a lot of the basics down. But Lonnie has basics down. She's got advances down. She's got everything down. Uh, the Walehi people, she's one of the, like, she's, she's ready to kill. She's badass. I'm sorry. Um, she may not be my favorite of the High Busters, but Lonnie, I believe, certainly out of the three, is probably the most devastating one out of all of them, especially in the comics. Like, she gets her shit wrung pretty bad in the comics. Not as bad as the other two. Worst case, she was going to get choked out, or maybe her neck snapped. Like, Keegan's got broken ribs, he's spewing blood. Max got a broken leg altogether. Like, I'm surprised his leg is still attached. Like, Lonnie was, Lonnie was, like, the worst case scenario, we still have Lonnie. I, I think Lonnie kind of deserves where she is. Finishing up the list at the very tippity top, I have Victor Hoffman. Now, people are going to probably ask right now, and you have the right to ask, Hoffman's in a wheelchair at this point. Um, he's probably not seen combat since the end of the Locust War. You're right. I'm not arguing that. You're 100% correct there. Full on. No argument. But, I think it's fair to say I think this is a very fair assumption that when I do these lists, and I, the Carmines are different because a lot of them died, well, died, they died in their prime. There we go. Because we still have characters that are around, like um, we have Clay. I was going to call him something else. We have Clay. He's alive. He's not in his prime currently, but I, I put him on there as his prime. I'm sorry, I would. Hoffman has done so much in his career. If you took Hoffman at his prime versus Lonnie in her prime, I have a strong feeling Hoffman would probably have a good chance at whooping some ass. Like, you need to understand, like, even Book Hoffman is ridiculously a little bit more OP than you think. He took a bullet right through his ankle and kept on going on, healed from it, everything. You never hear about that bullet wound in his ankle ever again. He, he has fought hand-to-hand -hand with a lot of characters. He has been on the front lines. He helped defend Jacinto when it was ready to sink. He was there when Rom was killed. Like, he's done a lot. Hoffman... Hoffman's done a lot of things. I truly believe, like, and a lot of people like to gas up Hoffman as being this, like, oh, he's way more powerful than you think. I think he's strong, not as strong as some other characters, but as an old man in three, he is redonkulously strong. Dude defended Anvil Gate twice. He's, he's, he knows what he's doing. So I, th I think he fits well into the high tier. Like, during the Locust War, there was some heavy stuff going on. And he was in the middle of a lot of it. And I'm talking heavy as in bloodshed heavy. Like guns heavy. Like things on fire heavy. Anvil Gate multiple times was attacked by the Locust. And he was there holding them off. Until the very end when they were sure they were going to die. I'm sorry. I think Hoffman out just outclasses everyone. I can't see... Like Lonnie will be the closest to beating him in like a, a fight. Hand to hand I think Lonnie would have a good chance. But I think tactics wise... Like, understanding of weapon-wise, environment-wise, I think Hoffman has a good understanding. Because it's shown, 
Hoffman is willing to go covert and do shit. Like, Hoffman is, like, well-rounded. That's the thing. The only thing I can think of that he's not well-rounded in is maybe hand-to-hand -hand or maybe, like, formal training because he originally, like, he went through the, the boot camp and everything, but then he went to an officer rank. But then he got thrown into everything that happened. So officer rank, it's not like he was sitting in a chair all day. Like, now. I'm sorry. I Hoffman's at the top. Like, if, like, if you compare him to other characters, like, if you throw in, like, Ty, you throw in, like, Marcus... You throw in Cole, Baird, you throw in Delta in general, like Alex Brand. Yeah, there's some characters that are going to beat Hoffman in a comparison here. I'm not going to argue that. But out of these six for the Hive Busters, no, Hoffman wins. Hoffman, Hoffman's the winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner for Hoffman. I have no argument. He he stomps them. He wins. I. What? what how do you argue it? Like... I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm praising the name of Hoffman here, but it's true, like... That's where I see it. Hoffman number one. And that's going to do it for this list, for the tier list, for the Hive Busters. I think that pretty much covers everything. I don't see it as being as hard. And hard's a, a pretty loose term for, like, the Carmines. Because, like, the Carmines, I already knew who was at the top, who was at the bottom. I kind of had to figure out where everyone else fell. But, like, Hana and Jossi are very obviously not trained soldiers. Mac is not, but he has done a lot to prove that he's above a low-tier character. You know, Hoffman, Lonnie, and Keegman... They have, like, heavy training into a bunch of things. Some of them have lineages that put them up there. You know, some of them have been around for decades. Uh, yeah, that's how I see it. The, the Hide Busters was a little easier. I feel like Gabe's Convoy is going to be more interesting. Uh, whenever I get to that one, I don't know. Because the next few videos I already have plans for. And then we get into the new discussion series, which will be announced at the end of December. Um, yeah, I'm going to say... The next few tier lists are going to be more interesting than this because the next few, there are characters that can bounce around either or, and you have to figure out where they fall. So, uh, that's going to do it. I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank everyone for making this possible, and thank the patrons for making this possible. I will see you guys later on. I love you all to death. Uh, yeah, here's to more tier lists. I, I actually do enjoy them. So, love you all. Later.